Good morning. Today, I'm going to walk you through the steps on how to get about a student visa here in Canada. I'm going to show you the website and what documents are needed for your application. This particular video is about the student permit. Let's click on English. It will lead you to this website. And we want to go and click on study. So studying as an international student. This website gives you all the latest news about crossing borders or moving to Canada. There are several topics here. There's preparing to apply. That means you're still corresponding to the schools. And this part here, the school already approved your credentials. And now you're trying to apply for a study permit here in Canada. And the last one is if you're working or traveling as a student, these are the guidelines. So let's go to the very basic one. The very first thing that you do is to find a school that has the program that you like. What does designated learning institutions mean? These are the schools here in Canada that can and are allowed to give out acceptance letters to international students. That means they can host international students for a particular program. If you scroll down below, you will find a list of what schools are available and if they are legit. So let's choose Ontario. And from Ontario, you will have there several schools. We are filtering our search to Toronto schools only. So there are like 177 schools that you can choose from. And from here, you can go to their website and look at what the programs they offer for international students. Let's say, let's pick one school, this one. And let's Google it. It's in Brampton West, and this is their website. So learn about the school, what are their courses, and what you think will fit your interests, your background, or if you really want to switch careers, which one do you think is suitable for you? You can go into web and graphic design, or you can go into accounting and payroll administrator. So these are the programs that they have. You can always contact them. They would always have their contact information on their website. So any university or college that is listed here, just Google it and check out what their programs are for the international students. So if you're looking at a different province, at a different city, you can always filter this and look for um, the school of your liking. What does this column mean? Offers PGWP eligible programs. PGWP means postgraduate work permit. That means if you graduate after studying with them, they give you a work permit. Like for this particular school here, Adler Graduate Professional School. So they do give out a work permit after you study for this particular program, Master of Psychology. So there's no other listing here. That means this is the only program that they will allow a postgraduate work permit. Now that you have narrowed down your search on a learning institution or a school or a college or a university and You've communicated with them. 
you took whatever requirements they needed, or if there is a special exam for you to take, and you took it, and then they gave you an acceptance letter, what needs to be done after? What needs to be done after is get a study permit. What documents do you need to study here in Canada? Proof of acceptance is basically the letter from your school saying that you qualify for their program. Conditional acceptance, it may mean that you need to study either French classes, English classes before you can enroll on the main program. It all depends on the school. So if there's conditional acceptance and there's prerequisite courses that you need to take, they will write it down. But you also need to apply. Once all those prerequisites are met, you need to apply for the study permit to be extended. Proof of identity is your passport or a valid travel document. And you need two recent passport size photos with your name and birthday written at the back of each photo. Proof of financial support. Canada needs to know that you have money to pay for your tuition fee, to pay for your living expenses while studying here. You may be granted work while studying, but still they would want to know if you ever you can't get any work, will you be able to fund yourself for the duration of your stay? Any proof that will help in making it easier for them to approve. Let's say I have a family member who is funding my education. That means the bank statement of that family member, or if you've already paid for your tuition fee, the receipt that you paid your tuition, or if you've already rented out for the whole year an apartment, whatever document was signed, let's say you've asked from the landlord, to give you a receipt for that lease, then that makes it more confident for the immigration officer to approve your study permit. Here is a table of the funds that you need to show that you can fund yourself while studying here. This table is for outside Quebec. Mm -hmm. Quebec has a different rate. If you notice, living expenses for the student alone is 10000 this is for a year. On top of it, you will have your budget for your studies, 833. So if you're bringing a family member with you, additional 4,000 to it. There are two family members, then add more. This is their table for Quebec. Again, all these are found in cic.gc.ca. I'll put the links on the description for this video. So you have the proof of acceptance, proof of identity, and proof of financial support. How to apply? You need to get your instruction sheets from this website. So you're applying from outside of Canada. And how do you want to apply? Either online or on paper. You can always go online, which is faster. If you're applying on paper, you need to do all this. The instruction guide, there's a link to it. It's guide 5269. Again, here are the step-by-step -step processes that you need to follow. And the application package. So application package for, let's say, Philippines. So this is the whole application package. These are the documents that you need to fill up. So the package normally comes with a checklist first. The checklist includes what documents do you need for your application. 
From the forms package, we've opened up the document checklist, the IMM5483E. Again, when you were given the set of instructions, package was also there for your forms. The document checklist is where you find the list of the forms that were included in the package. Now, some of these forms are not needed, like for this one, only if you are hiring an agency to process your application. This one also, only if you are authorizing CIC or the Canada Border Services Agency to release information from your case file to someone other than yourself. That, that means you're authorizing somebody. You will need this form, this form, and this form if you have a common law partner that is coming with you. So documents checklist, the proof that you paid for the processing of the visa, photocopy of your passport, make sure that it's the page where it has your passport number, when it was issued, when it would expire, your photo, name, date, place and date of birth. So that particular page. And you would need to enclose your two photos. They might require biometrics again for you. That means you might go to a third party or a consulate or a, an office that are approved, allowed, or accredited to get your fingerprint and your photo. We're on page two of the document checklist. We need acceptance letter from the school enclosed. This one is not applicable if you're not going to Quebec and you would need your proof of financial support. If you're, again, if your documents are complicated, you can always put a cover letter on top of it, explaining that why are you attaching this document and then proof of your marriage license. And if there are other additional documents that are required. Again, if you're lost, the website is there. You can always go back to the website and Google filter search for any topic that you like. This is just an overview of this document checklist. Once your major documents are ready, then go ahead and pay your fees for the processing. Choose Philippines for the country. Choose temporary residence and study permit. So for the Philippines, these are the fees, 150 Canadian, and if you are required biometrics, these are the fees. So you've paid, your documents are ready, it's time to submit. Make sure that you keep your receipt because that's part of your document checklist. So now we're ready to submit our application. Submit your application and I'm choosing Philippines for the country. Let's send anyway. These are examples of additional requirements depending on your country. For Filipinos or for those who are submitting their application from the Philippines, they would need their passport for the last five years. If you had two passports, then you would need to show your two passports and all the pages with the visas, all the pages with the steps. And since for the purpose of this exercise, we are submitting through paper and not online, it is definitely easier to submit online. Let's finish off this example by knowing where to submit it. It says here that we submitted to the closest Visa Application Center or VAC. So we click and we scroll down and search for Philippines. So there are two visa application centers, one in Cebu and the other one in Manila. So if you click here, let's go to Cebu's VAC. It would lead you to this third party. It is an important note here 
that booking an appointment with VFS Global to submit your Canada visa application is a free service. Contact VFS Global and ask further details on where to submit your application. Just contact them regarding how to send your student permit application. So those are the essential steps. Hope you learned from it. Good luck with your processing. Good morning. <coughs> <coughs>